It's 2024 and the Apple Vision Pro has just been released and it is straight out of the future. Got the messages again. Got music set up here. Big screen TV set up on my wall. Gordon Ramsay showing me how to cook above the stove. Notes right here for some groceries. Hey, how's it going? Oh, hey, catch. Thank you. And as we walk around the house, everything stays pinned exactly where we left it. The past decade has seen virtual reality and mixed reality headsets go from bring novel ideas to the next revolution of how we interact with computers. But while the recent craze surrounding VR and mixed reality headsets may have you believing that this technology is brand new and at the cutting edge, it turns out that this technology, for the most part, has existed for decades. And as its roots in the early 80s, it was literally decades ahead of its time and would take the world over 30 years for it to catch up and finally realize that VR, or at the very least, mixed reality, was the future of computing. Today we are going to get into a time machine and travel back to the beginning of the VR revolution with the story of a company called VPL Research and how they invented the future over 30 years ago. Our story begins in 1984 with the founding of Virtual Programming Language Research, or VPL Research for short. It was founded by Jaron Linear, who is widely considered to be the father of virtual reality and the person to coin the term virtual reality. VPL Research was one of the first companies to develop and sell virtual reality products. The device they invented was an input system for computers. It was called the Data Cloud. It was revolutionary. It would be connected to a computer and it would track your movements and orientations as you manipulated and reorientated virtual objects on a computer screen. The data glove system measures and records the bending of finger joints fast and accurately. Dynamic measurements of hand operation can also be recorded and analyzed. The data glove was one of the first clear illustrations of the need for users to interact with computers in a more intimate way beyond the finger pressing of a keyboard and mouse. While you could use the data glove on its own to manipulate stuff on a computer screen, VPL didn't just stop with the data glove. They also created the iPhone, a head-mounted display that immersed users into a computer simulation while tracking their head movements. In other words, a headset similar to the modern virtual reality headsets. These are the special glasses called the iPhones that you put on and um, when you put them on you're seeing inside an imaginary world instead of inside the physical world. Mm -hmm. So uh, the idea is that by wearing computerized clothing right over your sense organs you transport your sensory system into a reality that can be of any description. Beyond the visual immersion that the iPhone provided, it also provided audio immersion through an audio component that would cover your ears. It was incredible. It tracked where sound was coming from in the virtual world, meaning if you moved your head, you would hear the sound differently depending on your head's new orientation in relation to the sound source within the virtual reality environment, mimicking how our real world hearing works. VPL is also putting sound into virtual reality. The audiosphere renders sound in three dimensions, height and depth, as well as left and right. The user perceives sound as coming from a specific location in the virtual world. To further make this experience more incredible, VPL built the virtual reality built for two system, which allowed two people to interact in the same virtual reality space. I need to say this again. This was the 80s, the days before dial-up internet was even a thing. To complete the immersion experience, they created the data suit, which was a full body outfit with sensors for measuring the movement of your arms, legs and full body, creating a full sensory experience like none other. 
This technology was so advanced that NASA began looking into research about how they could use it. For example, instead of an engineer having to go all the way to the space station for fixes of any problems, he could instead simply wear the VPL headset and enter a simulated environment of the space station and make the repairs remotely. Applications of this technology include control of remotely operated robotic devices and vehicles that require a sufficient quantity and quality of sensory input and feedback to approximate actual presence at the task site. Sadly for VPL, it was just way ahead of its time. It released a product to a market that was nowhere near ready to receive it. And if you couple that with its deep price of $10,000, there simply wasn't a market for their product. This lack of business eventually led to the company's bankruptcy in 1990. An old age saying goes, there is nothing new under the sun. Almost everything that we think of as new or cutting edge was once new and cutting edge before. Sometimes it's not the exact same product, but the same ideas and concepts manifested differently, and other times it's the reinvention of something that had already existed. In our case, the latter is true. Virtual reality isn't a new invention. It is a reinvention of an idea that has existed for decades, with the only difference being that this time the idea might actually make it to the masses and change the world, just as its originators had envisioned decades ago. One can only imagine a world with a more advanced VPL data suit, and like how NASA looked into using the VPL data suit for remote space station repairs, imagine if this technology could reach a level of sophistication that could allow doctors to remotely operate in countries with a desperate need for doctors. The idea that physical location should not be a constraint for human collaboration and expression is one that has existed as far back as the invention of the telephone, when it allowed us instant communication between people anywhere in the world. Then the internet took this a step further, allowing for a broader range of interactions between people in different physical locations. VR and mixed reality headsets are going to take this breaking of physical boundaries to a whole new level. The future is happening right before our eyes. The pages of history are being written as we speak, and they've got quite the story to tell. <laughs>